speaker. And we have with us this morning another author of a book that you have in your package. So everybody has this particular book. And this morning we have Carrie Macro. Carrie is an award-winning author and a breakthrough advocate. He knew early on that he wanted to make a difference in the lives of others. At about age four, he was diagnosed with PDD and OS, pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified. Uh, for those of you who aren't my age, you may not even realize what that is because it's not in the DSM any longer. Uh, that actually was something that people in the behavioral health field gave when they weren't sure what to give for a diagnosis, really. Anything that has NOS after it says we think, but we don't know. Um, so he had that, and that really has been rolled into autism spectrum disorder now, and it was still considered a form of autism back then. Growing up, his future was uncertain. Uh, among other things, uh, from one of the documents I have, uh, he was nonverbal for a period of time. Today, however, after many hours of therapy, a supportive, loving family, Harry's conquered many of his challenges. At age 28, he's a nationally known motivational speaker, a best-selling author, a movie consultant, and founder of a nonprofit. So please welcome Carrie Mangrove. Today. Yeah, I love this weather, right? Uh, maybe not. Uh, it's such an honor to be here today uh, to speak to all of you on a topic that is very, very dear and dear to my heart uh, simply because of the work I do today. So, for the past eight years, I've uh, traveled the country as a uh, professional public speaker talking about autism, inclusion, uh, diversity, bullying prevention, and many other topics. But one of the biggest topics that I love to discuss is a topic that often gets mis uh, misunderstood in our community sometimes, and that's the journey to adulthood with an autism spectrum disorder. Unfortunately, uh, still in our community, many, many people who are not personally affected by autism or disability sometimes think of autism still in the same realm as Green Man, where they think all people with autism are boys, and they're amazing in that, and you know, when they turn 21, that's basically, they'll go to Las Vegas with you and win you a lot of money at black tech tables. And, um, and uh, today, one of the biggest things that uh, I do is I talk about this topic of adulthood because uh, as you'll see in our presentation today, it's so many of these kids when they age out of school at 21, they lose so many, so many supports and it becomes a huge, huge challenge for them. In, in between our national numbers that indicates that the majority of individuals with autism are unemployed or underemployed or the fact that for the majority of individuals with autism or adults still live at home with their aging parents, uh, the majority of people with autism also don't get to go to a post-secondary institution. And then finally, guardianship, where so many of these kids are falling through the cracks because there's not enough conversation, especially as they're transitioning to adulthood, talking about who will take care of my child when I'm gone. So I have a personal story in this community, which is why I pursued this career. And it was based on my earliest beginnings uh, growing up on the autism spectrum. I was actually completely nonverbal until I was two and a half years old. And for a while, there was a very, very gray area in my life, not knowing if I would even get to college one day, if I would be able to find a full-time job. So for the people who in this room were just me and me for the very first time today, I want to share a poem with all of you quickly so you could get to know me a little bit better and my journey on the autism spectrum. So this poem I'm about to share with you is called Only If You Knew Me. If you knew me, you would know I was not verbal at two and a half. You would know I was diagnosed with autism at four. You would know I got kicked out of two therapeutic preschools because they said they didn't know how to control me. You would know I had extreme sensory integration difficulties. 
you would know that I would lash out to get attention when I couldn't communicate on my own. You would know I twirled my hair as a coping mechanism. And back in the day, couldn't do haircuts because of the sensor issues, so I had Aerosmith, like Steven Tyler Rockstar hair. You would know that when I was in school, my peers labeled special education wrong instead of special. You would know I spent hundreds of hours a year in physical, occupational, speech, music, and theater therapy to get me to where I am today. You would also know that I spent hundreds of hours a year being bullied because of my autism diagnosis and for people thinking that I was quote unquote different. And for a very short time, you would know that being institutionalized was a possibility. But if you also knew me, you would know I graduated from college. You would know I received a master's degree, ironically enough, to pursue a career in public speaking. You would now know I'm a doctoral candidate. One more year to go, fingers crossed. Uh, you would know I have a full-time job today. You would know I've consulted on several major motion pictures to bring a realistic portrayal of disability to our entertainment industry. You would now know I live independently. You would know I consult to help parents and educators who have children and also students with a wide range of developmental disabilities. You would know I'm a professional speaker, life coach, and a best-selling author. And moms know best, so I had to keep this in the poem. <laughs> Even though it's sometimes awkward, you would know I've had a girlfriend. And you guys got a book about autism and love. There you go. Um, you would know I love my, my, uh, my village, my friends, and the community we have out there. But I think most importantly, you would know that I'm caring. And no matter what autism means or doesn't mean, I'm just trying to be the best me I can be. Only if you knew me. If you're listening to this today, Please know that regardless of autism, regardless of any one thing in your life, that I can't define who you are. I know so many kids with disabilities today who are just trying to be the very best that they can be. We as a community have so many unique and amazing, amazing stories. That's why I love targeting autism and what they're doing by sharing those stories. So let's please make sure that those stories are heard in our communities. So that's just a little snapshot into my life on the autism spectrum. Uh, today as a 30-year-old man, uh, I, for the past eight years being able to do public speaking, I've uh, gotten an opportunity to write several books based on my journey on the autism spectrum. This poem I just shared with you was uh, in my first book I ever wrote, Defining Autism from the Heart, which discusses my experiences uh, self-advocating for myself for the first time. One of the biggest challenges I have with many of my mentees is them understanding the need to self-advocate for their wants and needs, especially as they transition to adulthood. So when I got to college, I told people for the first time that I had autism. And this spurred an opportunity to self-reflect and write poems and essays, which actually, ironically enough, became my first book, Defining Autism from the Heart. When it came out in 2013, I just assumed it'd be a nice Christmas present for my family, and you know, maybe it would sell a few copies after that, but uh, within three days, it became an Amazon bestseller for special need parenting. And with that platform, it gave us the opportunity to continue to write, continue to write books on uh, topics that we thought were kind of going underrepresented in our community, such as relationships for those on the autism spectrum, and then also post-secondary for those on the autism spectrum as well. So for the past eight years, it's given us this opportunity. Uh, when we were pursuing a, uh, our uh, master's degree, I received a scholarship from the National Speakers Association to pursue a career in public speaking. And uh, today, uh, it's given me the opportunity to travel the country speaking over 100 times a year. Uh, but w one of the greatest things I, I think I get the opportunity to do is get to mentor some amazing, amazing kids and remind them that they are not alone in this journey with a disability. So uh, one of the things that I just started doing a few years ago though was uh, I originally started off talking about things such as early intervention and the need and focus of early access to care. But then I realized just being 
through starting a nonprofit organization, through doing uh, job coaching and training for those with disabilities, I realized the need for this topic of transition. So a few years ago, I did a TEDx talk on what happens to children with autism when they become adults. Now, regardless if you're a parent, an educator, a librarian, regardless of where you, you fall in the spectrum here today, uh, one thing that is, we all think about is kind of just the concept of what will happen to my child when I'm gone, or what will happen to one of my family members when I'm gone. And we did a 18 minute TED talk based on this topic. So in, in this, we discussed four major points. We discussed employment and the fact that these kids are brilliant in many cases, but are sometimes having difficulty finding employment opportunities. We talked about post-secondary, we talked about housing, and then finally we talked about guardianship. Based on my own personal perspective of transitioning uh, into adulthood as someone on the autism spectrum. One thing we do today, wherever we go, uh, which has been an amazing opportunity, uh, has been uh, we have actually, to highlight stories of people in our communities, we started a Facebook page called A Special Community, where we highlight people who are impacted by a diagnosis. Now, every single place we go to, regardless if it's a Fortune 500 company or a small set of parent group meeting, we bring a tripod and camera and we invite individuals, self-advocates, with disabilities to share their stories. And one specific question we ask each and every single one of these individuals is, what would you like for the world to know about you? So I want to share with you some of the work that we're currently doing today with one very special 10-year-old boy. So we're going to be talking to the camera, and we want to make you famous. So we literally want to make you probably the most famous person on the planet. That's the second. Okay, okay. <laughs> no pressure. Autism basically makes it hard to connect. It makes it hard to get that connection, to make friends. They feel like more loners than well, in groups. It's also a learning disability, and in some cases, it's hard. It's, you have to. You can't speak at, in some cases. I met a kid called Tom, who he, he has autism, but he can't speak in proper English. He needs an iPad. And so, Lynn, one thing I want you to know is that I was actually diagnosed with autism at an early age, too. And I don't know if I've ever actually told you that. But I want you to know that I will always be here to be your friend, if you need a friend, okay? Yeah. Because even though it, it, it may be hard at times to connect to other people, you know, I feel like so many people with autism like us just want like what anyone else wants, you know, to, to feel connected and to have a friend. So, you always have a friend in me, okay? Well done this up. Yeah. He blows it up to Oh, he blows it up. <laughs> awesome, I'm kind of, kind of tearing up. Sorry. It's okay. It's kind of worse. So, one, one of the hardest things about uh, this, this interview specifically is what Liam wanted the world to know about him is that sometimes because of his autism diagnosis, it's sometimes hard to make friends. And Every single place we get to go to now, we not only provide these videos as educational videos for our communities to hear, but then we also try to pay it forward by doing a self-assessment based on these 15, 20 minute interviews on how we can go about helping each and every single one of these individuals we interview. Simply with Liam, he wants to let the, people, let the world know that you know, it's sometimes hard making friends. Liam, uh, to this point, had not made a friend in his life, and one of the things we decided to do was start a Facebook uh, community for him called Liam's Buddies, where we would simply just, the, the video went viral within just a few days, and there was countless people around the world who wanted to be Liam's friend. And today I can say that he actually does have a few friends, 
And now, every single place we go to, we highlight these kids. We highlight them as educational opportunities to show about people growing up with a disability, but then we also try to pay it forward for each individual we meet. So, with that being said, uh, the one thing I forgot to mention in that video is that peer mentoring is so, so impactful. Growing up, I had no Temple Brandons, I had no uh, John Elder Robeson's really to look up to. The numbers of autism when I was diagnosed were about one in every 1,000 being diagnosed, and now, as we see just uh, a few weeks ago, CDC is reporting that it's one in 59. So uh, there's many more role models in our community, but I think it's important as we continue our conversations that we continue to encourage our kids to, in schools, gain and follow peer mentoring, but also to remember it's not only for individuals with autism, but it could be anyone. We always need to kind of be focused on where we want to go as a community. And uh, with that, we do a lot of self-reflection exercises as well with the kids we work with. And, with that, we want to share an activity with you today. I see so many people scribbling <laughs> notes. Uh, so we give out all our PowerPoint slides. So we'll be uh, providing handouts for every single one of you here. So if um, you just leave your email, we'll be providing a handout. So you'll get all the slides today and all the videos as well. Hey, Terry, um, I'm going to uh, email everybody oh, okay. everyone's slides so you don't have to deal with Oh, perfect. OK, awesome. Never mind. <laughs> Uh, so for the next uh, three minutes, uh, I, this is a self-reflection exercise I actually do with a lot of kids, but I also do it with uh, adults as well. And I want you to partner up with preferably someone you don't know in this room. And I know it's, it's tough sometimes. It's like first year of school. Uh, and ask your, and talk about this question. When was the first time you were introduced to the topic of autism? Whether it's your parent and have your child on the spectrum, and maybe it was just the formal diagnosis, whether you're an educator, maybe just going into your career path. So next three minutes we'll discuss that and I'll be coming around to talk to you guys as well. So thank you guys so much.